Hey guys, welcome back. Sarah Kopp here with Revive at Home Decor and Restoration. Today, we are going to be doing a two-toned piece, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how to stain the top of a buffet and get this, no sanding required with the Rethunk Junk Stain Top. No sanding. And then the bottom, we're gonna be painting a timeless teal, a gorgeous color that you guys are gonna love. The um, contrast of the two are perfection. Okay guys, this is the piece that we're gonna be working on. Check this amazing buffet out. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna bring you closer so that we can check out all the details and kind of see what the top looks like. So the top, super worn, all right? It's got lots of spots with uneven finish, that's okay. It's an old piece, so it'll go right along with the overall look. So we're gonna be taking the top of this and we're gonna do a stain top. I'm gonna use dark walnut and then we'll kind of decide from there if we need to put a black on it to enrich the top. And then the bottom portion, we're gonna paint a timeless teal, which is a gorgeous green color. Um, I'm gonna show you guys later in the video how to paint all of this so that the details pop out because we do not want to hide those details. They're so gorgeous. This is um, a one of a kind buffet, that's for sure. Uh, we're in the back here where I work in the back of the store, so it's a perfect workspace. Um, so let's get going. First step of this and of every piece that you paint or stain with rethunk junk is the prep. Okay, it degreases, degrinds, deglosses, de everything to pieces. So all you're gonna do is this. You're gonna squirt it on. So it's a light spritz. Get a blue scrubby, especially if it's really dirty, like this piece right here. Clean it. Get all the grime off. Okay, this is the product we're gonna be using. It's called Stain Top. It requires no sanding whatsoever. Um, it literally adheres to whatever you put it on, as long as you prep it really good with that prep cleaner, okay? This one right here is Dark Walnut. Um, so what you're gonna do is prep your piece, shake this really, really good because the bits tend to fall down to the bottom, um, which I shook it, shook it. Ugh. Holy cow, here's a trick how to open stuff. Knock it. Man. And then pop it open. Okay. Get a um get a what do you call it? Plastic spoon. Get your plastic spoon and stir it up really good. I like to get all the bits. I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like without, hopefully without spilling it. Can you kind of see? It looks like literally purple, but it's not purple, it's dark walnut. And you're gonna notice in this video, ooh, I got my apron on. You guys get your aprons, get your messy aprons, okay? You're gonna notice in this video that it usually takes about three coats um, before you start seeing an enrichness of color. So what's cool about the stain top is you apply it and then it gradually increases in darkness. So first coat, you're hardly gonna see a change. Second coat, a little bit. Third coat, it starts to really enhance. And then you could keep going on if you wanted it darker. 
Um, so I'll go ahead and do the first coat. I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll just keep on adding coats and you'll see the increase of darkness. And let me remind you here, when we do this um, part right here, I don't care that it's gonna, it's gonna cover and look better at the end, but I think it's okay if it still looks worn because that's the, gonna be the overall look of this piece anyway, okay? So I've got the brush. This is another important part, the stain pad. We're gonna use this just to smooth out the top. So we're gonna dip it in here. We're just gonna simply apply it to the top. This is what it looks like. Just gonna get the product on. Doesn't have to be perfect with the paintbrush. And then we'll smooth it out with the um, stain pad. It's kind of drippy, so make sure you're not letting it drip down the sides. See how it looks purple? It'll dry darker. Takes about 40 minutes to dry. what it's looking like so far. Okay, when you smooth it out with your stain pad, you're not pressing down and wiping the stain off. You're simply just like evening it out. So I'm just gonna even it out. Make nice lines. Okay, this is the first coat and I've decided that we're going to put an extra little layer just on those spots that need it and let that dry before we do our second coat. So just to kind of help darken them up um, a little bit more, because I kind of think it just needs it a little bit. So I'm simply just gonna Kind of go over those really light spots. I think it'll blend okay together once I um, get the other coats on. So we're just kind of putting a second coat on the really light spots. If the scratches are really small, you could use like a really small paintbrush or Leave them. Okay, I think I kind of hit all the spots that needed it. Let's do this one a little. Okay, we, I did the first coat and then I went back over it, as you can see right here, and did like, I kind of put another light coat on top of these pieces that are really worn. So now we're gonna do the second coat. And after the second coat, you guys will be able to tell that it starts to enhance the color. So see how you guys can see the wood grain through there still? That's what the stain top does. It allows the wood grain to show through. So you're just going to apply the second coat the same way as you did the first. Just kind of slop it on there and then we'll smooth it out with the uh, stain pad. Okay, we're going to smooth it out. 
smooth it out again with the steam pad. Remove all the hardware, and after you remove the hardware, put it in a little baggie so that you don't lose all the screws. It's the worst when you lose the screws for these old pieces because sometimes they're hard to find the right fit. So remove all the hardware. Ooh, this one's tricky. It's got a little, let me show you. Let me show you how I get these off. Has a little like um, pin right here. See that? Can I hold that up? So we're gonna pop that off. What I usually do is just get a flat head and pry it underneath there and just gently pop it off. Don't lose that little pin. See that? because it comes out. So just keep that all together. It's really dirty. We'll clean all of that right there. Okay, we are going to prepare painting this piece, this gorgeous piece. Um, I have three coats of the stain top on top. The one is drying. Um, I might end up going back over that little worn section one more time with an extra coat just because it's not actually blending as well as I wanted it to. But here's what we're gonna be doing for the bottom. We're gonna paint it Timeless Teal. Rethunk Junk's Timeless Teal. I absolutely love this color. It's one of my favorite greens. It's really not teal at all. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why they call it Timeless Teal, but it's a gorgeous green, very subtle, absolutely beautiful. And it pairs really well woo, with walnut wood, okay? So we're doing the two-tone look. But first, and most importantly, what do we have to do first? Prep, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing that we did on the top. This piece is pretty dirty. And we're just gonna work in sections. So we're gonna put that on. I'm gonna use my scrubby again. wipe with paper towel. Sometimes it's hard to do the whole thing with a scrubby, like the flat areas are probably the easiest. And you don't have to get like in every little nook and cranny, but you're getting the main surface. I mean, whatever, whatever you can, okay? So we're gonna keep prepping it. I think I already sprayed that one. Already looking better. The prep dries really quickly, so pretty much after you're done prepping your piece, you can go ahead and start painting it. Okay, so I got the whole thing prepped and I messed up. All right, not in the prepping, but as I was prepping, I was like, oh my gosh, when you do two toned, you want to paint the whole um, top portion of this and see this under here is part of that top portion. So you wanna do the whole chunkiness part. And I stop like right here. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, this is definitely fixable, but I should have done it while I was stain topping. Um, I'm just gonna go back through and I'm gonna add stain top under here to that section. 
Okay, so I'll do three coats, the whole thickness, because that's all gonna be walnut, and then from here down will all be the, um, whatever, the timeless teal, okay? This is the real deal, guys. There's screw-ups in this video, okay? So make sure when you do two-tone that you do the whole portion underneath. This is such a thick piece that, I don't know, I just missed it. All right, here we go. So we got all the hardware off, although, and we got it prepped. Although, see this one? The screw is stripped, so I can't get it off. So I'm just gonna leave it. I taped it up so I can get this done because you all know we only have so much time to get things accomplished and this was the time to do this piece and to record this video. So I'm just gonna kind of paint around it until my husband can help me get it off. Cause I'll probably end up spray painting the hardware anyway and then putting it back on, so whatever. Okay, so we got Timeless Steel. This is the quart and you guys, I'm gonna link all of these um, products, the same top, the prep, the timeless seal, I'll link everything down below. So all you have to do is click on it and then we'll have it shipped right to you, okay? So this is the quart size, 32 ounce. I do not have a ton in here. Um, it probably, probably goes about right here. And you're thinking, you're not gonna have enough. Oh, you just watch, this paint goes really far. And I actually did put a little bit of water in it to, um, I don't know, to make it go on a little better because this is a little bit old. I've had it for a while. Um, so here's what I'm gonna show you. I'm using a two inch brush. So I like to use no special brush, just something that the bristles aren't gonna like fall off. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to paint this piece so that it looks old, so that it goes with so we give it lots of character, okay? So we're pretty much gonna paint it kind of sloppy and fast. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so that I don't get in every single little crevice here. I wanna highlight all of this, okay? So fast and furious is how you're gonna paint. So let's go ahead and just do a section here. I love this color. All right, here we go. See how it goes on. Oh, I can tell my paintbrush is not great. It's kind of, <laughs> feels like it's breaking. So see how we're just gonna paint real fast over those? See what that did? I'll bring it closer. Hold on, actually let me finish this part so it doesn't dry on me. You wanna work with the paint and keep it wet until you have the look that you like. Okay, don't stop and leave. And what else I forgot to do, shoot. Crap, to pull this out, because I don't want to get paint. I don't want to get paint on this section. Remember, that's the part that we're doing the two-tone look. So be careful with that. You might have to tape it off. I'm usually pretty careful. Um, I'm just gonna run it along there. I'm gonna do the top, that's how I do the tops. You just pull it this way, it helps it not to get messy. Okay. And then let me, so I'm leaving a lot unpainted. Let me show you here. I'm gonna push this on a little bit so you can kind of see these details too. See how we painted fast? So it left all of that wood exposed in the middle of those. Okay, it helps it to kind of pop. All right, and we're just gonna keep painting. So your first coat should just be super light. If you're painting, if you're painting something that you want it to look old, right? This is an old, we're going um, for an old look here. I don't want to paint it totally solid because I want it to look like, I don't know, I want it to look older. Okay, watch this, we're gonna do this too. Come down, let's do it quick. 
Just don't paint in all the grooves. That might be hard for some of you guys. Just do it. Okay? And this is way faster than painting every single little nook and cranny. You can whip this out in like an hour. Look at that. Can you see how it's popping since we didn't paint all of the darkness? Okay, now this is how you're gonna paint the sides. Watch this. Just use, oops, let me scoot you back. I'm just gonna go like this, cause we don't wanna get it. You can actually paint the inside of this, that would be fine, but I'm doing this fast and I'm not gonna mess with it. So see how when we do it like that, it keeps the side in clean, or it keeps it clean. Gives you a clean line when you do it like this. When you go like this, a lot of times it gets paint right in there, and I don't want that, okay? You want it, you want like intentional sloppy, not sloppy. So there we go, see, it's clean, okay? And that's how you'll do the whole perimeter of the door and the drawer. So doesn't that look cool right now? Look how, I mean, we haven't even distressed it, we just, or I just um, didn't paint it solid. So we're just gonna continue to do that to the whole entire piece. Okay, so I have the first coat on of the front. Here's what the look is so far. Um, I might not even paint the legs. It might be cool to leave the legs a dark walnut. What do you guys think? Could be pretty cool. So, might think about that one, although I already got some paint on areas that I shouldn't have. But yeah, that's easy to wipe off. Hey, here's a little tip. You guys can use the prep. If you guys get paint on something that you didn't want paint on, put the prep on and just give it a good little scrubby and it'll come off. So we'll let that dry. I'll work on the sides and then um, we'll come back and do a second fast coat, okay? Fast. So remember the part that was really worn on top? I've gone over that part twice by itself and not the rest of it. So just kind of darkening it up a little bit more so we can get it to match a little bit more. It's not gonna be perfect and we don't want it to be perfect. Imperfect is perfect, right? So I'll show you how that dries and blends in really nicely. Hey guys, so I decided to leave the bottom um, the walnut color, but I wanted to enhance it kind of like the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a stain top to the bottom too. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly how I do that. Um, it's the same kind of method, except it's a little bit messier, a little bit runnier. I normally don't use um, the stain pad when I do the legs like this. Let me bring it down a little bit more here. Scoot it out. So, so I'm gonna apply it with the brush. I'm just gonna hit these legs. It'll just kind of enhance the color. So all you do, it's really runny. This product is really runny. So when you put it on, make sure when you're doing something vertical that you don't have a ton on your brush. Like see how this is running really badly? Let me show you. <laughs> 
it's really messy. So make sure that you have something underneath, like cardboard or I don't know, something that you don't mind getting wet. But it will dry, it'll dry nicely, it'll, it'll level out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're not making this perfect. This is kind of an imperfect piece. I honestly would rather work on imperfect pieces. I think it's more fun. They have a lot of character. So we're just gonna go through and do all the legs like this and let them dry. They'll dry that like dark walnut color and it will match the top really nicely. Okay, we're gonna be uh, applying coat number two. And when I do coat number two, I'm gonna do it the same exact way as I did the first one. Uh, just really fast in a very light coat. We're just gonna barely cover this, um, just to add a little bit more coverage. But again, we're gonna go fast over these pieces so that the uh, walnut pops through. Kind of see the difference in one coat versus two coats. So it's just a little bit darker. It's turning more of um, a green. It's beautiful. This is still pretty streaky. We're leaving this streaky too, but it's a little bit more solid down in here. Um, I think it's gonna look gorgeous when we're done. So opening the cabinet door, we painted this out, outer edge, this edge. I didn't paint under here. No need to, you're not gonna see it. Um, and then, oh my gosh, look at the cobwebs in there. This is, <laughs> needs cleaned out still. And then painting this little lip and then that section right there too. So this is definitely an old piece. Um, and then let's move down to the bottom here. These are starting to dry. These are dry, so you can kind of see it just enhanced the color. It made them just a richer walnut on those legs, which just looks gorgeous with this piece. So we're getting really, really close to being done. Let's take a look at the top. This is actually still drying, but almost dry. Helped it to look a little bit more uniform after adding um, extra dark walnut to those really light pieces right there. Again, we have an imperfect product here, but that's what I like because it just makes it fun. It makes it fun to paint and then you don't have to be so perfect. Okay, it's time to protect the top of the buffet. So we're gonna use this polyurethane. It's a commercial grade polyurethane. Um, there's two kinds, there's tough top satin, which has a little bit of a sheen. And then there's flat top, which is flatter. Um, so they're both really great. I normally, actually it just depends on what I'm painting and what I want the top to look like. Um, if you use a dark color, if you're using like black or blue or something like that, the manufacturer recommends to use the satin because sometimes the flat can make it look a little bit cloudy when you're putting it on top of a really dark color. So, um, yeah, you can kind of play around with it. I just did a black table and yes, I felt like it looked cloudy. I tried the flat just to kind of see what it looked like. So I painted back over it and then used the satin. Uh, today, I don't know. I think I'm gonna try to use the flat. We're gonna see what the flat looks like. I've used flat on walnut before and I think it looks just fine. Um, so I don't like as much of a sheen, but on the lighter colors, you really can't tell um, the satin from the flat. So here we go. We are going to shake it up really good. Make sure you have a clean brush. Don't use a brush that has any like bits in it, okay? Any paint bits, because you'll get it on your um, piece. 
This thing stick, hey, if your jar sticks, bang it, bang it on the side or something, it'll open right up. Okay, after you get this on and it's still wet, make sure it's still wet, I want you guys to go from one end to the other. You're following the wood grain and smooth out, even out your lines. As long as you can get it applied first and then you can um, kind of even it out later. Don't stop in the middle, keep going, okay? Okay, this is what the flat top looks like when it's on. See how it's really milky looking? And see those tiny little bubbles? That's the self leveling in it. So it will level out, it will dry more clear. Um, this could possibly have a little bit of a cloudy look. We'll see, I think it'll be okay. But um, if you're concerned about having any cloudiness, use the satin on the darker colors. So I think it's gonna turn out good. All right, we are almost done with this piece. It's turning out absolutely gorgeous. I love the timeless teal color. Um, we have the stain top drying, the legs are dry. Last thing, this is the last final touch. You don't have to do this, but it just adds a vintage -y look to your piece. And I absolutely love this product. It's called the Antique Brown Glaze. And it really just kind of helps your piece pop and gives it a lots of added character. So I wanna show you, I already used it on this section right here a little bit. So I'll show you um, what it kind of looks like. Let me bring it a little bit closer. Okay, so see all that like brown stuff um, up in here? That's all glazing. You can kind of just see spots where I've hit it and it kind of gives it like a shadowy effect. Just very vintagey. Now this is a lighter color, so you can't see the glaze maybe as much as you would be able to see on a lighter piece, like something that was white or you know tan or something like that, or a really light gray. So this is what it looks like. Kind of looks purpley, and actually it almost looks purple when you apply it, but it will turn and dry brown. So, and there's also a black glaze. The black one is really cool too, but with this one, we're gonna stick with the brown tones because I think it goes well with the timeless teal. So this is how you're gonna apply it. Get a small brush, okay? So you can kind of get in crevices or wherever and a wet paper towel, just damp and then wring it out. And then you're simply gonna just apply it in the areas that you think needs to look vintage -y or maybe where you wanna add a shadow. I like to put stuff like in cracks like that and then I kinda like to pull it so it doesn't look too, I don't know. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. But I'm gonna just take it all the way down on the inside here. And then what you can do with your um, paper towel here is, let me show you what it looks like up close. See, it's kind of like purple looking when it's on. So then what you do with your wet paper towel is you kind of just wipe and just kind of like that until you like the look. Now let's say that you put too much glaze on after it dries and you're like, oh, I glazed that thing just way too much. It looks terrible. Um, pay back over it, okay? All of this stuff is layerable, so it's not a big deal if you put too much on, even too much paint or whatnot. 
Um, you can always just cover things back up. Now you can also put this over the whole entire thing and then wipe, but I like to use my glaze kind of sporadically. So I normally just kind of hit it where I want. Um, so it's really fun to play with. Love it, it just gives your piece just added character, okay? So we're gonna be applying this on the whole entire piece, even on the sides. And then after that, guess what? We're gonna put the hardware back on and we are done. We are done. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you comment below and I will be linking everything that goes with this whole piece below so that if you were um, ready to purchase and try this yourself, you can just click on it and $5 flat rate shipping will send it right to you. Here we are with the finished product. This is the gorgeous buffet it's painted timeless teal and dark walnut stain top on the top. Let's check that out. I think it turned out really pretty. I'm gonna show you some of the details. This is the glazing. We'll kind of go down. You can see where I hit it, just in certain areas of the glazing. You come here on the side. This will be for sale in my shop. And then I also spray painted the hardware a um, copper color. So let me show you the hardware. Just popped it off and spray painted it. Just kind of went right with the piece. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching.